if you're watching this on the VLE or you floated by on YouTube a very warm welcome my name is Rory Lees Oaks and today we're going to look at, it, at an introduction to supervision so why do we have supervision well there's a quote here that I've got from Aegis Counseling which is on the internet um, supervi supervisors on the internet who writes not only do most professional bodies in the UK such as the BACP and the UKCP and the British Psychological Society require their practitioners to have supervision but it is also seen by many as an ethical imperative. A client who encounters a therapist working without supervision should consider carefully whether they wish to work with that person and supervision exists for these reasons. To protect clients, to improve the ability of a counsellor to provide value to their clients and to support practitioners and we're going to call them supervisees from now on in the presentation to support their emotional core. A little bit about that later on. Supervision. What does the word mean? Well, a definition from Inskip and Proctor in 2001, they are two individuals who write books and train supervisors, would call it a working alliance between two professionals, where supervisees offer an account of their work, reflect on it, receive feedback and receive guidance if appropriate. The object of this alliance is to enable the worker to gain in ethical competency, confidence and creativity as to give the best possible service to clients. So already we're seeing in that definition that this is about the quality of service that you give to a client as a supervisee. Supervision is all about the client and making sure that you're working in the best possible way. And I make the point that a supervisor's responsibility, first responsibility, is to clients. A supervisor holds the balance of your practice. So if they feel that you're not working in an ethical way, they will take action. Um, now this doesn't happen very often, but they hold the right to do that. So they hold the balance of your practice. So why do we need supervision? Well, because we sometimes get lost, confused, unsure, unclear, perplexed, disorientated or bewildered when working with clients. Um, sometimes clients' material leaves us with those feelings and we go to supervision to get some kind of clarity to understand how we're working and what process of working will be best for the client. And supervisors are usually trained, but they should be trained, and hold a counsellor's supervision qualification. And there's different models of supervision, but we are going to look today at Proctor's model, who's a writer um, in supervision, and they talk of normative, formative, and restorative. So when you go to see a supervisor, the supervision can move into any of these areas, and we're going to look at these areas in a little more detail. Well, normative is quality controlled. It's concerned with ethics and standards and professional issues. So there's a sense there that your supervisor will want to know if you're being ethical, if you're working to the standards that the profession expects. And that will be through asking you, um, you know, questions or assessing how you're working um, in terms of your client work. Educative. Well, it's an expectation that supervisors are further on their practice journey than you are, that they've qualified before you have and they've taken up continuing professional development. So their learning experience and their practice experience is further on down the road. So they will be able to help you develop skills, your understanding and your ability. And within um, supervision, that should take, I would say, quite a, quite a, um, a lot of different forms. It could be that you practice responses to clients. It could be that your supervisor has a speciality in terms of working with certain presentations, in which case they can share information. And so it's all about, it's a consultative process. It's all about gaining confidence and gaining competency. And finally, support. Well, occasionally, um, as, as practitioners, we may feel that we're stumbling in the relationship between the clients, that we're not perhaps being as effective as we might be, um, or sometimes that both the client and the practitioner, the supervisor, is stuck. They don't know which way to go in terms of the, 
the therapeutic journey. So I think it's fair to say that supervisors offer support, but within that support, there'll be a, a time where you untangle where you're at and try and gain some understanding of why you're stuck or why working with this client can feel um, a little bit sticky, maybe. Now, Carol has identified seven tasks of supervision. Again, another writer in the field of supervision. And I'm going to go through these tasks. Um, first one, as we've discussed, is teaching. There's an educative element within supervision. and We've discussed that earlier on. Evaluation. We should all evaluate our work. We should look at what we did well, what worked and what was useful. We should look at the, the, the things we've done that aren't useful. And if we're honest, there are things that happen within um, the therapeutic relationship that sometimes um, don't work very well. It might be you reflect something back or you think you're being empathic and actually you're way off the mark. Um, so we evaluate, you know, evaluate that. And that's part of um, being a professional therapist is evaluating your work. Monitor professional practice. Well, again, we've touched on that. This is about ethics, making sure that your practice is giving value to the the client and that you're fit to practice that, you, that you're not overwhelmed by material or you're working too hard or you may be heading you know perhaps for burnout council i will come back to that later in the presentation consultation well it's a consultative process isn't it supervision two professionals meeting to discuss client work to discuss professional issues Monitoring of administration tasks. Well, that might be about if you're a student counsellor, making sure that your 150 hour supervision forms are filled in, that um, you're writing a report maybe of fitness to practice for the awarding body for a student counsellor. And it may also be about making sure if the supervisor's working within the organisation that the supervisee counsels in, that they are abiding by the policies and procedures of the organisation. And finally, it should be a learning relationship. Supervision, you should come away thinking, oh, I've learned something new today. I didn't realise that before, and now I do. So I would say a sign of a good supervisee, supervision relationship is where most of the time, not all the time, most of the time you come away thinking, do you know, I've learned something today. That's going to be very useful and benefit my client. And I just want to come on to counsel. That's going to light up red. And I put a little star next to it and I'll tell you why. Your own issues. Now it's expected that supervisees reflect on the impact of their own history and issues on the work with clients and bring this into discussions as appropriate. But there's a distinction between supervision and therapy. And if your own issues begin to be the main focus or to interfere with your work with clients, then your supervisor would expect you to seek therapy. So an example of that may be that you're working with a client who's going through a bereavement and that triggers what we call a parallel process where the client is talking about their bereavement but also it's bringing up feelings for you about your bereavement or a bereavement you might have had in the past. Now most therapists would realise this and be able to kind of put their own stuff onto one side for the time they work with the client. However, sometimes supervisees can get overwhelmed and their own stuff overwhelms them and if as a supervisor I was seeing a supervisee who was consistently talking about their own difficulties their own issues in their own lives and not focusing on client work then I would expect them to seek their own supervision supervision is not for personal therapy I would expect a supervisee to seek their own therapy if they are uh, they were talking a lot about their own issues in supervision and not about the clients. What's the expectation of supervision? Well, certainly for trainees, it's one and a half hours of supervision for every eight hours of client contact or once a month, whichever comes first. So if you, if you have four clients a week, then there's an expectation that you'd have supervision every fortnight. If you have two clients a week, there's an expectation that you'd have supervision every month. Or, more frequently, if you're struggling with a client, if, you've, if you have worked with a client and you're feeling uneasy or troubled, 
with with how you're working then you shouldn't wait you should take supervision sooner rather than later if you want further information and if you're watching on the VLE if you click the resource tab above the red arrow you'll go to a really good resource and if you're watching on YouTube um, you'll be able to look at some of the links that have used I'm afraid you'll have to write them down um, if you are watching through the VLE you'll be able to pick up the PowerPoint with these hyperlinks um, intact and finally thank you for watching.